Hello everyone, Mr. Fawcett here, and we are back with another AP Calculus lesson. Uh, today we're going to continue our discussion of the DISC method, or finding solids of revolution. But instead of revolving around the x or the y-axis, we're going to be revolving around other axes, like the lines x equals negative 4, and y equals 2, etc. So our axes of uh, rotation are just not going to be the x and the y, they're going to be some other ones. But you'll notice that everything else tends to be the same as far as the idea of how to set up this integral go goes. Okay, let's jump right into this first problem. Uh, for this one, we just have to identify which integral is c correct. Uh, but let's also go through a visual and whatnot of what the solid will look like. It says, let R be the region enclosed by the line Y equals negative 1. That's the pink line or the purple line down there. The line X equals 2. That's the vertical line. And the curve Y equals X squared minus 1. Uh, a solid is generated by rotating R around the line Y equals negative 1. Again, that's the purple line. Well, the first thing we should think about is, okay, our disks are still going to be perpendicular to the x-axis because the x-axis is horizontal and the line y equals negative 1 is horizontal. So that tells us that our integral is going to be set up in terms of x, right, if our disks are going to be perpendicular uh, to the x-axis. Let's go ahead and now visualize what's going on here. I'm going to take a point from the curve, right, this blue curve, and I'm rotating it around the purple line. So I need to make sure my distance stays the same. That's about the same distance. There's one of my disks. Again, the distance being not the distance between the curve and the x-axis, but the distance between the line y equals negative 1 and the curve and its opposite point on the on the other side of that line so again those would be our that distance would be our radius we can pick some more points to do here So we're going to get a solid that looks something like this. So if I drew this in a different way, it would look something like this. Okay, we need to go ahead and try to find the volume uh, of this solid. And as we know, we need to find the volume of one of these little disks uh, and then just sum all of the volumes of the disk up using an integral. So the volume of one disk, these are circles or cylinders with an infinitely small depth. Uh, so we get pi r squared times h. The pi is obviously going to stay the same, but uh, what's our r? Right, this is the difference between this lesson and our previous one. Uh, our radius here is not the distance between the curve and the x-axis. It's the distance between the curve and the line y equals negative 1. So we actually need to think about a previous lesson right, where we found the area between two curves. Well, to do that, we would take the difference right, top curve minus bottom curve, and then integrate uh, over whatever interval we were using. So the idea is the same here. The radius is the distance between our top curve and our bottom curve, and we're going to do top minus bottom. Our top curve here is the blue line, or the blue curve, y equals x squared minus 1. So we'll have x squared minus 1. My bottom curve is the line y equals negative 1. So I'm going to have minus negative 1. Uh, and then my the height of these disks is just my dx, right? that infinitesimal. Pause the video right now, though, and I, I really want you to think about 
where this came from. Because right, this is really just tied to an idea from a previous lesson. The area between two curves, right? We take the integral from A to B of the top curve minus the bottom. And if this was uh, in terms of x, we would have a dx there. Same idea here, right? Top curve is blue, bottom curve is no longer the x-axis. When the bottom curve is the x-axis, this just ends up being top minus zero, which just ends up being top, right? Which is what we did uh, in our previous lesson. But now our bottom curve is something else other than zero. So it's gonna be a little bit more complicated when we set up our equation. Okay, let's start to simplify though. Uh, so I get pi in parentheses, I get x squared, uh, negative one minus negative one. Well, that's like negative one plus one. So I end up, oops, don't let me forget my square there. Uh, I end up just getting x squared plus zero or just x squared dx. So I get pi times x to the fourth dx. Uh, that is the volume of one of these disks. If I want the volume of the whole solid, I'm just gonna integrate. Uh, my interval here, I'm going from x equals zero uh, to x equals two. And of course you could pull that pi outside of your integral to make it match one of our answer choices. Looks like we are going with A. So the only, again, the only difference here today is that our bottom curve is not going to be x equals zero or y equals zero. It's going to be some function. Uh, generally a, well, in all of these, we're just gonna have a vertical or a horizontal line. So it's just gonna be a number uh, that we're subtracting from our top, our top curve. All right, let's look at another example. do this one right here. Uh, it says, let R be a region enclosed by the line y equals 2 and the curve 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared. Uh, a solid is generated by rotating R around the line y equals 2. Uh, we need to find the volume of a solid. You can use a calculator. I should say you may. You may use a calculator. Okay. Here, because we're, again, rotating a lot around a line y equals, right, our disks are going to be perpendicular to the x-axis, so everything needs to be in terms of x. Let's start to visualize what this is going to look like. Uh, my two points at the end point of the interval, right, those are just going to stay on the axis of rotation. They're not going to, they're not going to move. Let's do... Let's actually do this largest slice first. I'll do two smaller slices, one on each side. We sort of get this top, top looking figure. Be a top that little toy that you could spin on one edge. Uh, obviously my top half of that should be a little bit stretched out, right? Cause this distance from up here should be the same as this distance down here. So not drawn perfectly to scale, but I think we get the idea. Uh, and of course we need to figure out what the volume of one of these infinitely small cylinders would be. Small is in terms of the depth. Uh, so let's start with the volume of one slice is equal to pi r squared times h. Uh, our radius here is going to be the distance between 
the purple horizontal line, right, y equals 2, and my curve, y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared. Here, though, notice what the top function is, right? The top function is actually the horizontal purple line. So when I do top minus bottom, I'm going to keep my pi, uh, my top curve is 2. Then I'm going to subtract off my bottom. So 2 minus 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared. Uh, my h is, of course, going to be my dx. Well, we can do some simplifying here. Oh, keep forgetting that square. We are squaring the radius. Um, it's actually... It's actually up to you. I, I actually am not going to simplify here because I, I forgot we do get to use the calculator here. So I'm just going to keep this as is. So I just wasted a, wasted a little line here, but that's okay. Uh, this would be the volume of 1. So if I want to find the volume of the entire solid, all right, I'll set up my integral. And, well, when we go to set up our integral, right, we, want it, we run into a little problem. I know that my lower bound of integration is 0, but what is my upper bound? What is that x value right there? Pause the video. See if you can figure out how to find that. Well, that's the intersection point of the red horizontal line, right, and the blue curve. So we need, just need to set those equal to each other. I'm going to get 2 is equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared. Uh, divide both sides by 2, I get 1 is equal to the quantity x minus 1 squared. Square root both sides, I get 1 is equal to x minus 1. Add 1 to both sides, I get x is equal to 2. So my upper limit of integration is 2. Uh, everything else is going to stay the same. Again, you can keep the pi inside or you can keep it out. And they are allowing us to jump right to the calculator here. So pause video, punch that in, and uh, see what the volume of this solid turns out to be. And it turns out we get approximately 13.404. Answers the same whether you're rounding or truncating. All right, uh, let's look at one more where our disks are going to be perpendicular uh, to the y-axis. Let's look at this one right here. Again, we're just going to be setting up our integral. Uh, it says, let r be the region enclosed by the line x equals negative 4, the line y equals 1, the line y equals 4, and the curve y equals e to the x. Uh, so maybe you want to pause the video, take a look, make sure you know what each of those lines represents uh, in our diagram. Uh, we are going to be revolving the region r which is the shaded region, around the line x equals negative 4. And we just need to figure out which in integral is going to represent that area. Well, again, this, in, in this case, our disks are going to be horizontal, so perpendicular to the y-axis. Uh, let's just do a little visual. Here's a point. I am, actually, I, midway through this video, I figured out a better way to do this. Instead of trying to eyeball it, Draw that other point first. Get something that looks like this. Uh, next disk. Something like this. Uh, we'll do one more disk. The bottom here. If the computer would cooperate. But yeah, this method has been much better. And our solid's going to look like going to look like that. Okay, uh, cross sections are still circles or uh, cylinders with an infinitely small depth. Uh, so the volume of 1, the volume of this pink one, get pi r squared times h. 
Um, the radius, well, the radius here is the distance between the purple vertical line and the blue curve. So the idea of top minus bottom function still applies here, but we're looking here in terms of, or we're looking at uh, these functions in terms of x's. So we need to make sure our functions are in terms of x's before we do top minus bottom. Uh, that means we need to convert this, right, to a function in terms of y. Uh, we did this, I think it was in a previous video. Um, we're going to need to take the natural log of both sides. So I get the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of e to the power of x. Uh, this gives me the natural log of y is equal to x. So when I do uh, top minus bottom for my radius, um, top function is natural log of y. Uh, bottom function would be negative 4. So I get pi in, in uh, brackets natural log of y minus negative 4 squared. Uh, and then I have dy, again, because everything is in terms of dy here. Uh, we could simplify once more, just the double negative there. So I get the natural log of y plus 4 quantity squared dy. And now I need to make sure that I am integrating over the interval. Uh, does it give us the interval here? Do I have to do something to find it? Well, I know that this point has a y value of negative 1. I know that this point up here has a y value of, uh, sorry, I should have said, I think I said 1. It uh, should be 1, not negative 1. Uh, and then up there, the y value is 4. So the volume of the whole solid are integrals in terms of y. I'm going from 1 to 4. Uh, pi times a quantity of the natural log of y plus 4 squared uh, dy. And again, you can pull that pi out of the integral to make it match one of our choices. Looks like all the integrals, uh, the intervals are set up correctly, 1 to 4. Uh, all of them also have a dy. So the only thing we can look at is the top minus bottom part. So we had to get that part correct to get the uh, integral correct. And that choice is going to be d. Okay, uh, that is going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, again, pretty similar to our last lesson. We just have to employ that top minus bottom function here uh, to get our radius. But everything else is, is pretty similar uh, to revolving around the x or the y axis. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will look forward to seeing you next time.